every country should feel insecure, should feel, you know, that uh, there's terrorists everywhere around the corner. And what do you what do you think is the kind of the remedy that the, that they will offer to this uh, artificially created type of problem that is terrorism? Right. Well, you know, what the amazing thing is, is if you go back to uh, uh, a letter that was supposedly written by Albert Pike. And this is reported in um, in William Guy Carr's uh, 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 Pawns in the Game. Yes. And he reports that so that Albert Pike apparently outlined. So this this book was written way back in the 50s and yet uh, outlines that there's a plan for three world wars, that the first one was to be against um, uh, against the Soviet Union. Against so I uh, I guess. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, it's, you know, basically to, to create, you know, to essentially create the threat of socialism. The second world war right. would be. Um, against Nazism Germany and the third and the third world war would be against uh, the Islamic world yeah so amazingly pressing for a book that was written way back in the in the 50s and he alluded to these documents and I think there was talk about that these were on uh, on display or something for a while on on uh, uh, exactly I I can't remember exactly what what it was but there has been questions about the authenticity of the mails because this was something he sent back and forth to uh, Giuseppe Massina, I think, and talked about this, right? Exactly. So, you know, it's, I don't know how true it is, but it's still pretty accurate. That's and what happened, yeah, amazed, of course. Yeah. I'm just amazed that somebody in the 50s already knew that uh, that the planned stage for World War III was going to be a war, a war with the Islamic world. Yeah. I think that's that's pretty, pretty, pretty great foresight. But it, do you think if, it, if it was do you think it will be, I mean, again, obviously we have to recognize that there is war going on right now, but it's not on the scale, if you if you know what I mean, as World War One and World War Two were. Do you think that uh, will will it lead well, up to this eventually, or what do you think will happen? I don't know. You know, you see, the, the amazing thing is that the the you know that the the Turks had created a pretty great civilization, but like every civilization, it began to decline. And you know, you, you're looking right now at the at the only time in Islamic history where there is no form of consolidated rule. I mean, Islam, the Islamic, you know, the amazing thing in this is that is that uh, Brzezinski recognizes it as well, mm-hmm. even though he believes in in creating this artificial fear. He himself, right? He said, he says, you know, people criticize us for our. Uh, well, I can't remember exactly what he said, but approximately what he said, you know, criticize us for our 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 policy on global Islam. He said there is no global Islam. <laughs> It is true. You know, Islam is in a complete state of collapse, and I don't—I don't mean Islam, the religion. I mean the the, the practice of it and the community. It's okay. is completely fractured and disintegrated. Mm-hmm. And this is why, you know, the, the the Wahhabi movement was suppressed when the Ottoman Empire was in power. When it collapsed, the opposite happened. When it collapsed, then they could finally come forward. And what's happening now is that. Especially in in North America, uh, the the Wahhabis in Saudi Arabia, because they have so much money, they they monopolize uh, Islamic literature. I'm not sure how it works in Arabic. Presumably, it's the same in Arabic, but definitely uh, is English Islamic literature. Mm-hmm. And they they controlled apparently 80 percent of the mosques in in North America. Okay. So and what they're doing with that is that they're they're spreading their Wahhabi Salafi approach to Islam, which is a literalist, fanatical, narrow-minded jihad. Most they'll deny their their jihadi approach, but it usually and it's usually through the Salafi approach that they end up, uh, uh, you know, justifying jihad and eventually terrorism. See, the whole interesting thing about the Albert Pike uh, thing is that is that he was on the Palladian, so he was on the Palladian right with Bulwer Lytton. Mm-hmm. And Bull Relitton was sorry, not Bull Relitton, Lord Palmerston. And as I said before, Lord okay. Palmerston was okay. the who was the guy who headed the project to spread Scottish Rite Freemasonry. So way, the way that I see it is that they recognized that if they were going to create a war with Islam, it wasn't going to happen, uh, you know, uh, of its own accord. Right. They were going to have to create militancy in the Islamic world in order to. Uh, turn it against the West. And this is what the literature is helping to do now then and and to further spur along this 
ideology exactly. of the of the class of civilizations, I guess. Exactly, mm. because if you'll find if there's any uh, you know uh, uh, opponent in the Islamic world, it's the Salafi. It's the Salafi movement. It's not. It's not Islam. You know the, the the traditional practice of Islam, and that's the point. And you all these all these so-called terrorist groups are always affiliated with some branch of Salafism or Wahhabism, and this includes Pakistan and India. In fact, the the, the, the two locales where where this trend is most localized is Saudi Arabia and uh, Pakistan and parts of India. And there's a number of these offshoot movements, like there's the Hizbi Islami in Pakistan and so on and so forth, and mm -hmm. various other little factions that were created, you know, in the period of, of British power in that country. Mm -hmm. So so that's the point, right? So it's really understanding the scenarios, understanding that these guys had to, and it also helps them to understand what is happening in our time, is that you have this puny little fringe of radicalized Muslims who have basically, you know, no, who can't really be compared to, to, to the traditional practice of Islam, but are being used to, to stigmatize, you know, uh, people's perceptions of Islam. Right, right. The Taliban is another example. The Taliban were, were uh, educated in madrasas that were financed by Saudi Arabia hmm. in a, in a uh, interpretation of Islam, uh, which is called uh, the Adil Bundi movement, which is another one. I don't have any proof on it, but I as I would understand that the Adil Bundis is another one of these uh, sects that were created by the British in their period in India. Hmm. So that's why, you know, the it's the, the, the Taliban were, were a caricature of Islam, it's, it, but used specifically to, to fan the flames of this so-called classic civilization. And really what's amazing 